Hey everybody, this is the Striker Defender Tool by Topps Knives. Made in the USA, as all Topps Knives are. And I bought this knife because I was looking for a knife that is more heavy duty than the Mora Garberg, which my wife and I have been using for a long, long time. But it's not so huge as like the tracker is. I love the tracker, never go anywhere without it, but it's a bit of a bear for my wife to use. So, got this right here, been running it through its paces, and now I'm just gonna talk about it and tell you why the Topps Knives Striker Defender Tool has replaced my Mora Garberg as my everyday carry belt knife. So, I'm going to get into this knife here, show you what it is, what it can do, and uh, maybe you might consider this as another option for a really heavy-duty, belt-friendly, tracker-style bull in a china shop. Alright, here we go. Okay, real quick, as a size comparison and style comparison, you can see... My Mora Garberg here, that's been my belt knife. It was my belt knife for a long, long time. Uh, I trusted it, I used it for everything. Uh, it was my most used tool. Uh, here is the Striker Defender tool. And here is my Tom Brown Tracker, also from Topps. This is the T1. So, there's this little size comparison and you can tell the style comparison too. That tracker's got that that very prominent, well-known uh, toothed spine right there, as does the striker tool. It's got that toothed spine as well. It's not full quarter inch at the very top like the tracker is, but the Mora Garberg doesn't have it at all. It's just a straight blade with a clip point, okay? All right, so there's a little size comparison right there and I'll show you what this thing can do. So this is a piece of oak, you can tell by the grain, right there. Got her set in my fire hole right there. One time for good measure. Makes pretty quick work of that seasoned oak right there. So this is just a piece of pine right here, the pine that I just peeled.
that quarter inch high carbon really lends itself to prying prying this timber apart all right i'm just going to use the tooth spine on the striker to make some grindings this is a piece of pine and uh i normally don't make grindings you know small small shavings because it just doesn't matter that i get super small stuff i don't do feather sticks and all that but uh, i'm just going to show you that these teeth are absolutely killers when it comes to making shavings if if that's your if that's your way so i just pounded it in to this piece of what is that oak Going to use that oak as a as a vice for this knife. And that striker tool is just brutalizing. Catching it on this blue shop towel so you can see. These teeth are meant for peeling open helicopters from what I understand. I did a little bit of research on this knife before buying it. I mean, I'm no expert about the history of it by any means, but so there's just a small bit of of a tender nest right there. I mean, do you need small shavings like that? I don't know, maybe if you're a big time YouTube guy and you're doing all kinds of bushcraft and prepper survival kind of videos, then maybe you wanna make some comment or make some content like that. I don't find it necessary. Uh, to do tiny shavings like that but by god if you wanted to you could definitely make those kind of shavings with these teeth it's decently sharp out of the box but I've put an edge on this knife several times since I've had it since I've been using it but I mean I dig holes in the ground and my ground is all rock and dirt I don't have any soil but and I don't do shavings I don't do those curly uh, what do you call them tinder bundles with uh, what fire sticks I am not NW Primate by any means, but with this knife, I can make stuff like that, no problem. And that is plenty, small enough, especially with pine, pine, dug fir, whatever you're using, that's plenty small enough. I don't need to make sawdust. I was just showing you that you can make sawdust with this tooth spine right there if you're looking to do that. Uh, 
frankly. I'm too old and cranky to be doing all that. But you can. Uh, the important part, the important thing, is that you get that small stuff. It doesn't have to be feather sticks. And this tracker defender tool will do that. No problem at all. right here just making up a little bit of smaller pieces to put on this fire here I'm gonna light this thing up and make some char cloth so I want some smaller pieces to put over the fire lay sorry for the video quality I don't do videos very well at all I'm a trucker but uh, I like to share some helpful stuff with people if when I discover it you know I think just prize this timber apart no problem at all Pretty quick work. Okay, so, so far you've seen how easily this striker defender tool handles uh, oak and pine, at least. And I don't think you're gonna have any other problems with any other types of wood. Uh, your poplars and all that other stuff, it's just gonna go right through it and chew it up. Uh, but there's something that you should know about this track, or about this striker. It wasn't intended to be a bushcraft or an, you know, an outdoorsman type of knife. This was commissioned by an army sergeant, I believe, for his striker units. His striker, I don't know if they're com considered commandos or not, but um, it's a fighting knife. You can tell, you know, it's got a blood groove here and on the other side, uh, it's a fighting knife. And it's also a, you know, it's meant to be a bull in a china shop. Uh, from what I understand, this toothed spine here is tested and proven to uh, open up, you know, aircraft grade aluminum and stuff. I don't know what those striker boys are doing, but, you know, <laughs> they rely on this knife to get it done. Um, so, that said, I'll tell you this, when I first bought this knife... I noticed right away that it doesn't really lend itself very well to throwing a uh, spark off a ferro rod, right? And that is my primary form of fire starting um, if I don't have sunshine. Uh, today I'm going to light this thing up with a spark and a ferro rod. Now the only 90 degree angles that you're going to find on this knife is right here at this jipping and right here at the choil, okay? But both of those areas originally are covered in this black traction coating, okay? I grinded mine down a little bit and you know, I didn't do a great job of it, but all these teeth right here, they're sharp. They're sharp, they'll get you. And then this false edge right here, that's not a 90 degree edge. That goes, I don't know if you can see, but it kind of bevels out it's not a 90 degree edge that 90 degree edge is important that's a sharp sharp edge now having said all that I'll tell you I can throw sparks with this knife okay I grind it off the traction coating right there you see the difference it goes all the way up to the jipping here uh, I grinded that off trying to get um, bare metal 90 degrees and I didn't do a great job of it but who cares because I can still throw sparks on it. I've tried to throw sparks with these uh, teeth right here. 
man, if you ain't super careful, you're just gonna rip your ferro rod all to pieces. And I use the harder, um, more iron content ferro rods uh, more often than I use the magnesium heavy ferro rods. But either one, you're gonna chew that ferro rod to bits with this if you're not super careful. Uh, you could throw a spark with this knife. However, I find that, um, you know, a little high carbon, um, what do you call them, uh, hacksaw blades or um, just, well, I've got a saw on my Leatherman Super Tool 300 that I use for ferro rods and I just, I'm just showering gobs of sparks down onto my fueled cotton. So is that a deal breaker for you? It might be. If you want a knife that has that sharp 90 degree spine on it, uh, like so many bushcrafters prefer, then this knife may be, it may be a deal breaker for you because you're not gonna get that out of this knife here, unless you're a heck of a lot better at, at grinding that jipping down um, and cleaning that up a little bit. If you're better at it than I am, uh, well, two things. One, that might help, and another is it's not a far stretch to think that you might be better at cleaning that up a little bit than I am. So it's not a deal breaker for me because I can throw sparks um, by other means. I don't have to have this knife. I prefer to have this knife and then use another tool to shower sparks onto my tinder. Um, another thing is with the grinding and making that sawdust. Uh, you might not find it so easy to make sawdust with this thing. It, it's a little bit of a learning curve to get the control with this knife. Um, but I'm telling you, these teeth here are meant to chew up helicopters um, and they shouldn't have any problem making sawdust out of whatever wood you're using. Um, I don't find it necessary to make super fine shavings, you know, that the uh, the feather sticks and stuff like that. I don't I don't need to do that because I carry fueled cotton with me. I carry a, a little cotton ball full of grease, full of Vaseline, and that sucker strikes up all the time. It burns hot. It burns for several minutes at a time, and it's going to light up the smallest stuff that I'm going to cut up with this knife. You know, um, little bits like what I showed you a few minutes ago. So. Bottom line is, it's not a bushcrafting knife. It was not meant to be a bushcrafting knife. Uh, but it is, I think, the happy medium between the humongous tracker, the T1 from Tops, and the Swedish Mora Garberg. It's that happy medium. And that's what I was looking for for my wife. And when I found this one here, I decided, man, that's my new belt knife. And, you know, I've been using this thing and it just, it's a dream. I love this knife. It's been on the market for probably 13 or 15 years and I just don't know why we don't see more of this knife online uh, because it is awesome. Now, it's gonna be probably twice the price of a Mora and maybe a little bit cheaper than the, uh, the Track or the T1. Um, but man, it's, it's appropriately priced right in between those two. And you know, it's, at least twice the knife that the Mora is and it will do every single thing that you need the tracker to do but this sucker will go on your belt pretty easily okay so what I've got here is I've got a little piece of uh, Vaseline cotton I just fluffed it up a little bit and I'm gonna try to get a spark off this knife like I told you I could uh, it's it's not gonna work as well as other things I've used, like a hacksaw blade or whatever, but I generally don't have too much of a problem with it. Just gonna shower some sparks onto this fueled cotton and we'll see how she goes. Let me jab, jab that into there a little bit. Yep. All right, she's lit. I, I'm not going to ever allow that to be the deal breaker 
uh, such that I don't carry this knife. You know, it just doesn't make any sense to me to sacrifice this knife just because of that. And normally, I, normally because I'm already hit to, to the sparks and how easy it is or isn't to put sparks down with this with this striker. Normally, I, I wouldn't use this striker to do that, but I just did it right now just to show you, you can get it done. It's just not gonna be as easy. All right, so let me sum up what I like about this knife, and then I'll tell you what I don't like about it. First thing, what I like about it is that it's, for all intents and purposes, it's a belt-friendly tracker. If you are a fan of the tracker, the Tom Brown Made by Tops tracker, like I am, then you're going to love this knife because this knife is a belt-friendly version of that tracker. Now, I understand Tops makes uh, four different sizes of the tracker, but I only use the T1. I own three of them. Uh, in fact, here's one. They all look like this. It's kind of beat up. I'm sorry. I know you're not supposed to show, you know, a bunch of wear and tear on YouTube videos, but whatever. I use my knives. That's all. I'm not spending $200 on a knife just to put it in a drawer. But, um, anyways. So, this is basically a belt-friendly version of that T1, in my opinion, and you could probably argue it any number of ways. Uh, the handle's different, uh, the shape of the of the blade is different. It's not a tracker, that's all. And I really like that spear point, that tip, that really lends itself to stabbing into wood, you know, timber, even though it's not designed for, uh, you know, a bushcraft application. Um, that's it. That's that's what I love about it. Is it's a belt friendly tracker style utility knife. All right. Let's talk about what I don't like about the Striker Defender Tool. So what I don't like about the Striker Defender Tool is well, a couple things. Um, and keeping in mind that what I don't like about this has to do with the fact that it's not a bushcraft tool okay it can be used for bushcraft very easily but it wasn't designed for that purpose it was designed for army commandos or whatever those striker guys okay so anyways what i don't like about it is the difficulty in throwing sparks and the fact that i had to grind this down a little bit and and didn't do a good job so i messed that up whatever it doesn't matter it doesn't have that 90 degree spine that we look for when we want to throw sparks off a ferro rod with our knife okay big deal uh, another thing I don't like is the serrations I don't like serrations on a knife I don't need serrations on a knife I understand their purpose it's a cordage cutter um, but I don't typically like serrations the good thing about the serrations on this blade is that they are the two to one uh, style serration and from what I understand that is the most efficient serration pattern that you can get on a blade the two to one which is the two small notches versus the one or you know against the one larger notch that's the two to one okay two to one um, also this has the that triple run of those two to ones here's the the large notch two small notches back to one large notch okay so this has uh, I don't know how long this is it's probably two inches long that's about as, as short a span of serrations as you can get and still be an effective cordage utility knife okay um, so at least they put the most effective uh, serration pattern down there the next thing is it's got a full tang, quarter inch, high carbon uh, steel right there. In my knives, in my outdoor knives, I prefer the extended tang, not the full tang. I want 
you know, uh, uh, maybe five sixteenths or even half an inch of, of steel to extend beyond the scales on that handle. Uh, the Tracker Digger has it. I love that. Um, my Kumatakri has it. Um, I like that steel beyond the end of the handle because that allows you to grab that blade and scrape on your timber and and you know then you're you're carving up a tinder bundle um, I like that also it allows you to stab down into that lumber or the timber and then baton straight down baton the tip of your knife straight down into that is it a deal breaker that it doesn't have a an extended tang absolutely not hell no I love this knife without the extended tang uh, you just don't want to stab this down and the baton straight down into the into the handles because you're gonna screw up these handles right here you're gonna beat the hell out of them so I like my tracker digger for that uh, but this right here is this striker is probably twice the knife that tracker digger is um, I just love it so um, also what I don't like about this knife and again it it's all about it's all because this knife is not designed for bushcraft if tops would take one of these teeth probably the probably this tooth right here this first one if they would take that and make it deeper and cut that sucker out to to receive a uh, you know a half inch diameter ferro rod that would be awesome because then you would put your ferro rod into here give that a 90 degree edge pull your ferro rod through there and you're throwing fire onto your tinder bundle okay that's about it that's <laughs> that's really it but again uh all those things have to do with the fact that this was not meant to be a camp knife that's it so those problems are my own it's not Topps's problem they didn't design this knife to be used in a camp or you know whatever they didn't design it to be used the way I use it the way you may use it unless you're a army striker commando All right, guys, I know this doesn't have anything to do with the knife that I've been talking about, but here's a little bonus video for you. Since I started a fire, I'm going to uh, cook up some char cloths right there. So I got some cut up jeans in that can and in that bottle, and they are just roiling right now. Hasn't caught flame yet, but... They will shortly. That bottle's smoking. So it's about to catch fire. Now the thing about that bottle, I've just got it corked with a piece of wood. Uh, if you're gonna cork it with wood, you know there's gonna be flame coming out of there. As soon as that stuff gets superheated, it's gonna start flaming. So, um, <laughs> it's kinda hit or miss with that. Once that wood, it, it's, it might catch fire. So you wanna use green or maybe even soak the wood if you can but you know you could put a rock in it if you want to or whatever all you're trying to do is uh, close it up just a little bit but that's it that's some char cloth cooking and uh, that's that now when you take that bottle out if you do char cloth like like I do um, in the glass bottle what you're gonna want to do is uh, you want to heat that or you want to let that bottle cool down pretty close to the fire you don't just want to let it you know you don't set it off to the side away from that heat you want to let it cool down gradually so set it down on the ground out, just outside your fire and let it cool down that way that beer can that will uh, that'll be just fine you could throw that off to the side if you want but yep that's my char cloth going <laughs> I might light some up for you so, two things about making char cloth in a beer can is, uh, one, you're likely to get really brittle char cloth where it's just kind of more crunchy than soft, and that's what I've got going on right here. That's, it's, it'll take a spark, but, 
uh, it it's not the best it's not ideal so throw that in the fire also because the tin can or the aluminum cans are so much thinner than um, other cans that you might use like a Johnson wax can or I've seen guys using those little Altoid mint cans it's a lot thinner so the can is gonna burn up you'll get a little hole in it and then before you know it your char cloth is lit uh, so be prepared if you do it the way I do it now you see that's not crunchy that's a good piece of char cloth be prepared to cover it up with dirt you know open up that can and uh, drag it out of there with your knife and just cover that stuff up with dirt right away and put put it out if it's if it's already gone to an ember that, like this piece here that's crunchy and it's just it's not ideal it will catch a spark as I said but it's not ideal I'm gonna throw that into the into the fire it just got hot it just got too hot but this piece here that's a nice supple piece you can't crunch crunch it up that's a good piece of char cloth um, and the reason why I do it this way instead of using a thicker metal can like um, like one guy I saw used a Altoids can that piece right there is crunchy 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 um, the reason why I do it like that is because I don't want to carry another metal can with me and I can always find a beer bottle or a beer can on the side of the road oh I just threw away a piece of good supple char cloth huh, oh well yep just uh just know that you might have to put that ember out if you're using a beer can but I got quite a bit of a good char cloth there I got this other stuff here this all came out of that beer can here's the beer bottle that I did char cloth in not sure how well that's done but you can see what happens here I set that right down into the coals and it got really super heated um, now if I had taken this right out of the fire when it's done and set it off over there you know nine or ten inches a foot away from that fire it would have cooled too fast and you're gonna it's gonna break well as soon as it breaks it's superheated in there and now you've got superheated fuel and you're adding oxygen to it because the bottle breaks open and uh, that's no good you're gonna light up your char cloth so uh, another thing is that a beer bottle is gonna take quite a bit longer to cool to the touch you can see I'm wearing my glove right now because it's still a little bit toasty but um, you're also gonna have to break this bottle so you're only gonna make one batch of char cloth out of it out of each bottle but the good thing is that if you have to walk home <laughs> you can always find a beer bottle and you may not find the cap with it okay so you can cork it with a stick cork it with a rock um, cork it with some mud you know some clay on top and just poke a little hole through the clay to let those burning gases escape but that's just another way to do it I'm gonna crack this bottle open once it cools down a little bit and I can handle it without a glove I'll crack this bottle open and uh, we'll test out the char cloth from the beer can in this bottle all right we're gonna open up this bottle here and see how she goes. I've got a pile of dirt right here just in case that char cloth wants to light up. It is a little bit hot. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to hold that thing for very long, but it's a little bit hot. Uh, and this dirt is just so I can cover it up real quick if I see that it's if I see that it lights up. So, here we go. There we go. 
bit of char cloth in there. Looks pretty good, doesn't look like it's lit. And it feels pretty supple. Supple just means like soft, still material. It's not, you know, crispy or, or uh, you know, it doesn't crumble in your fingers. And that's what you want. That piece is real good. So, I'm gonna strike some of this up. That didn't char all the way, but that's fine. Enough of it's charred that that'll be a really big ember if I want to use that. All right. Let's light some of this stuff up and see how she takes a spark. All right, I'm gonna light up this char cloth here. See how well it takes a spark. This piece here is from the beer can. It's pretty supple, a little bit crunchy right there. This piece here is from the bottle. And we'll see how she goes. Well, let me do it this way. That's lit. That's lit right there. And this piece is from the bottle. Oh, touched a hot spot, I think. 